Hey there everyone, it's Thackard and welcome back to the Blueberry series, a series designed to help new players learn the game mechanics, tactics, and strategies in Heroes and Generals. So, in our Blueberry series we've been talking about LMGs, but this is a Blueberry Shorts episode, and these are for when we have things from a patch that we just didn't have time to cover. Specifically today, we're going to be talking about the ammunition changes for tanks. Now there are a whole bunch of new shells for the tanks, so let's go take a look at them. The starter tanks now have four types of ammunition. The first is just your default armor-piercing round. The second round is now an armor-piercing with a tungsten core. This has much higher penetration, but does less damage. The third round is an armor-piercing incendiary round. This has less penetrative power, but does more damage. Lastly, we have the high explosive rounds. These have very little penetrative power, but they do a significant amount of damage. The armor piercing incendiary rounds are very good against vehicles and the other starter tanks. They have enough power to penetrate the armor on starter tanks and significantly more damage to take them out. The armor piercing with the tungsten core should be used against other light tanks. It has enough penetrative power to get through most of the rear or side armor of most light tanks, except for maybe the Stuart, which is actually pretty well armored for a light tank. The HE rounds are very good against soft targets or unarmored targets. So think about using them against vehicles and definitely against personnel. Now let's talk about heat rounds. These are high explosive anti-tank rounds. This is the type of stuff you find in bazookas and panzerfausts and also in some tank shells. Compared to the default AP rounds, heat rounds do slightly less damage and less penetration, but they keep that penetration at all ranges. So you will do as much penetrative power and damage at close range as you will at far range. Also, they have an explosive radius to them, so they can be used against infantry. The Germans can get heat rounds on the Panzer IV, the Hetzer, the Stug, the Tiger I, Tiger II, and the Jagdpanther. The Americans can use heat rounds on the M3 Lee, and the Soviets can use heat rounds on the T-28 and the Su-76. The heat rounds for the M3 Lee and the T28 are quite nice because it gives these tanks, which lacked long range power, a little bit of that power back, plus the options to go after infantry at the same exact time. There is also an HEDP round. This is a dual purpose high explosive round. This round sits in between an armor piercing round and a high explosive round. It has less explosive power than a standard HE round but it has more penetrative power, which makes it pretty good for going after vehicles or even light tanks. This shell is exclusive to the US and is only available on the Stuart. Now we're talking about APCR rounds, or Armor Piercing Composite Rigid. These are similar to AP rounds, but they can pierce more armor due to their tungsten penetrators. Compared to standard AP round, they have less damage but much more penetrative power. They are much faster than the standard round, but their damage and penetration power falls off very quickly over range. These new APCR rounds are for, well, basically anything that isn't a starter tank or the Stuart and the T-28. These tanks got the APC rounds, which are armor-piercing capped rounds. These rounds do slightly less damage, but do slightly more penetration, and have better correction angles. Unlike the APCR rounds, they don't have any additional velocity and the damage and penetration don't fall off nearly as quickly. Next up is the armor piercing high explosive rounds. The APHEs are basically a direct upgrade to the standard AP round. They do significantly more damage, they have better penetrative power, and they have better corrective angles. Now when I say they have significantly more damage, I mean they have SIGNIFICANTLY MORE DAMAGE. 
These guys hit like trucks, and I love it. This was a round that was basically added to all the tanks except for the starter tanks, the Stuart, and the Panzer IIs. The Panzer IIc and the Panzer IIl both got API rounds, or armor-piercing incendiaries. Now, these rounds do higher penetration and higher damage, but they lack that additional corrective angle of the APHE rounds. But they're fire, and that's cool. Next up, we're talking about the white phosphorus smoke round. When this shell lands, it creates a cloud of smoke. This can be used to help cover the movement of friendly infantry, or to blind tanks or even machine gunners that are based in windows. When it initially explodes, it does 50 damage over a decent radius. And while this isn't enough to kill anybody, it is enough to shake them up a little bit. The white phosphorus smoke rounds are available for the Panzer IV, the M4A1 Sherman, and the T-34-76. Lastly, we will talk about the shrapnel shells. Now, these shells do significant damage but have almost no penetrative power, which makes them quite nice for dealing with unarmored vehicles. These shells also do explosive damage to infantry. Now, it's non-lethal damage at about 75, but it does its damage in a very large range over twice the range of the standard HE shell. The shrapnel shells are available on the M3 Lee, the M4A1 Sherman, the T28, the T3476, and the SU-76. Tough luck, Germans. You guys don't get this one. Alright, so those were the new tank shells that came out in this patch. And I have to say, I really, really like them. Um, I might have had more fun tanking in the last couple of weeks, or the last week, I guess, than I have in quite a while. And not because tanking wasn't fun, it was just much more enjoyable this last week. Even with all the crazy Rambos running around uh, causing havoc. I think the big winner in this one is probably the APHE, as I'm thinking through stuff. It's, it just makes you feel powerful. It hits like an absolute freight train at really good ranges, and it just feels like what I would think a tank battle should feel like, you know, just pounding against each other, boom, 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 and it's a lot of fun. The other one that I really like is the APCR. Now, at range, it drops off a lot, but if you are up close, I was engaging in a tank at a, probably about 120, 130 meters or so, and I shot along the edge of him, and I was able to take out three different internal components. It's like that APC, APCR shot, it hits, and it just goes completely through the tank, and it shreds everything on its way through. So it's like, if you're up close, I suggest hitting that APCR button, and you'll just like clean out the inside of the tank, man. Just disable it real quick, like. Um, hmm. White phosphorus rounds. The smoke rounds. I actually like those quite a bit. My only caveat to that is I think the smoke fades out too quickly. You almost have to spend the entire time that you're there with your tank, you know, if, if you're trying to lay down smoke for people that are running through to an objective, it's like by the time your shell reloads, the smoke's fading. And so it's like you have to be dedicated to helping out the infantry. Um, I would suggest to Ritu increasing the length that the smoke uh, cloud stays around maybe by five seconds or something like that. Nothing too long, but just long enough to where it's like, if I'm a tanker and I toss a smoke here to help the infantry and I see something over there, you know, I can toss a smoke over there and then I can go back to the infantry. It's like, oh, now it's faded away. Um, so instead of having to always be focused on one location, you can help out multiple people. And that would be quite nice. Um, the big loser, and it's, it's not even close. The big loser is the shrapnel shells. Uh, it says they do like 75 damage and 24 whatever the distance is 
but the fall off must be absolutely extreme because I've literally shot four rounds at the feet of a person, maybe like two, three feet away from a person right next to them. And it's taken four or five rounds to kill some of these people. I, I don't know how extreme the fall off is, but it, it is using it for anti-infantry is just no go. Now, anti-vehicle work though, it's really nice at taking out things like uh, Jeeps, Kuba wagons, anything that is unarmored. It really hits hard there, and it's really nice for that. But for what it's like worth, uh, its usage is for like you know taking out infantry. It's just not good. It is it is no way near as effective as uh, a normal HE round. So if you were thinking about the shrapnel, I say pass on it. Hard pass, guys. Keep with the HE for now until maybe it's. Uh, patched and made a little bit better than it is now because right now it's just no point in using it so but those are more or less all the uh, shells my big thoughts on these shells that came out with the last patch and I have to say I spent a lot of time this last week going over all of them and uh, I did I quite enjoyed myself and the big winners like I said APHE APCR the biggest loser out of the bunch is the shrapnel. Um, I really hope that uh, Ritu uh, kind of works on that. But uh, yeah, so that was all the shows. So I want to thank everyone for coming out and watching. I want to ask you to leave your thoughts in the comments down below. Um, I really want to have your opinions on what you think about the shells, which ones are really good, which ones are bad, which ones really need to be buffed or changed somehow. And maybe we can get some of the Ritu devs to actually take a look at them and put some of those ideas into play in a future patch. But until those future patches come around, and until next week's Blueberry series where we get back to the LMGs, you all have a wonderful time in-game. If you enjoyed or disliked this video, I do hope you comment on it and give it a thumbs up or down. If you want to see new videos, please hit the subscribe button, and to be notified of new content when it comes out, hit the notification bell. But for now, thanks for watching. Have yourself a great day, and don't forget to bring it no matter what you do. And I will see you guys in the next video.